Hi, welcome. My name is Peter Simons, and you are tuned in to episode 55 of the Collaborative Business Podcast. Today's episode appears both on audio and video. And in today's episode, I'm in conversation with Ramanath Surya Prakash, who is a Global Alliance Manager at Infosys. Let's welcome Ram to the conversation. Well, good morning, Ramanath. Welcome to the Collaborative Business Podcast. Good afternoon, Peter. It's uh, very nice speaking with you today. Thank you. And uh, good to have you on the call, or uh, even on the video today. Uh, so that's okay. good. And, and that's indeed for the listener uh, who's listening into um, this uh, podcast on his earbuds uh, and thinks, what video? Well, you better move over to the uh, show notes uh, on petersimons.com to see actually uh, Ramanath and myself uh, here in conversation. Um, so before we dive into our conversation, uh, can you please introduce yourself to uh, our listener and viewer? Who, who are you and what do you do? Yeah, uh, thank you. So my name is Ramanath Surya Prakash. You can call me as Ram. I am from Infosys Technologies Limited, so which is uh, a global system integrator headquartered in India. It's about eight and a half billion dollar company, 170,000 employees. We have uh, presence in more than 50 countries. Uh, our area of business is predominantly business consulting, IT outsourcing space. And uh, so my role in corporate alliances is to establish relationships between technology companies and ourselves so that we will be able to come out with some very good solutions, differentiating disruptive solutions, which can help to add value to our customers' business uh, in their business growth. So we are constantly on the lookout for technology partnerships uh, and the niche partners and the established partners alike, and uh, which would uh, merge into our different service lines. And we come out with certain go-to-market solutions, which would uh, help uh, our end customers at large. Okay, thank you. Well. In our introduction, we said good morning and good afternoon, and you said your headquarters is in India, but you are not in India, otherwise it would not be morning for you, are you? <laughs> yeah, I'm based out of Seattle uh, in the United States. Okay. Uh, this role is global, so I manage several partners globally. So I support uh, a global sales force of 2,000 people and in all countries, in all time zones. and. Uh, more than 10 to 15 partners that I support uh, globally. So what we do is uh, our location is not necessarily uh, India centric, but we have to be where the customers are. We have to be where the partners are and uh, we have to be mobile. So I do a lot of travel. I can imagine. So 10 to 15 partners, how do you manage that? It's a pretty sizable group. Yes, uh, it's a very sizable group. So what we do is the following. So uh, we do have uh, like a global technical alliance manager teams and we also have a global alliance manager. So what I do is uh, I establish the relationship with certain partners and uh, I do have my counterparts in different delivery practices who are more, more technical in nature, uh, while I am too technical as well. But the role that they play is to see how they can integrate the competencies, capabilities, and skills related to that particular technology in their team. So they, they take care of, if I may say, technical pre-sales. So they involve and engage in proposals, uh, solution development, certification, training, some of those areas they take care. And when it comes to deals, we have large deal teams. So there's a larger ecosystem. So I am enabled by a lot of uh, people in the ecosystem, which helps me to be more scalable. I can imagine. Otherwise it would not be manageable for you yourself alone. Uh, yeah. yeah. So and, and um, when you look at your partners, um, are you deal focused with your partners or do you have a long term strategic alliance with them? Uh, can you tell a little bit more about that? 
Okay. So we ideally would like to engage with partners in a strategic manner. Mm-hmm. So in corporate alliances, we have more than 70 plus partners. And uh, at the unit level, we have a large, uh, uh, as, as I mentioned, we, we have a large organization. We are divided into several industry verticals and uh, several service line delivery horizontals. Wherein the horizontals bring in the competency in a certain area, be it application development and management, uh, independent validation and uh, testing, then we have uh, cloud, mobility, yeah. uh, infrastructure. So we have different horizontals. So we have certain niche partners in each of the horizontals. So what we do is uh, we have a certain class, a certain set of uh, partners whose uh, impact can be across many verticals and many geographies where we have established in certain scale of operations. So that we do in a strategic manner. Uh, those are the big players like SAP, Microsoft, Oracle, IBM, so HP. So these are the uh, some of the uh, examples. Uh, we also have certain strategic uh, partners wherein it's a very niche technology something that's changing the game in the market so, so we we select some of those partners and then we provide the strategic uh, um, uh, support for that uh, there are other partners which we would need in a service provider ecosystem because our customers are throughout the world and they are from different industries and they have their own priorities and they have their own technologies that they have within their system so we would need to engage with them on the specific technologies that they would recommend to us. Mm-hmm. While in many cases, they would ask us our recommendations. So in many cases where they already have an existing uh, technology in their invested, so we would need to have those relationships. So we would classify them as transactional, uh, then deal specific, and then the strategy. So this is how uh, we classify the partners and it doesn't mean that these partners are in the same box forever so as uh, we get more and more deals they uh, move to the strategic ladder okay okay understand so a, a partnership is always uh, in two directions how does uh, your partner look at you do you have any uh, idea about that yeah see uh, all partners have uh, different viewpoints about a relationship. Uh, what they state, what they mean, may not be actually the same. Uh, interesting thing. So, but at an overall sense, uh, the belief is the partnerships uh, should be a win, win, and win three times. One win for the partner, mm-hmm. and win for us. But most importantly, win to the, our end customer or common customer. So when this triangle is in met, you know, then uh, these are the element ingredients of the true partnership. Now, what they look forward from us is since we are having a global presence and we have an established uh, customer base, so they want access to our customers. Number one, they also want their technology to be furthered in uh, our ecosystem so that's that's how they actually uh, do and uh, in our case what we would like to do is uh, leverage their technology in our solutions which would help the customer see uh, they're able to lower their cycle time reduce their total cost bring more business value to their uh, the IT brings more business value to their businesses and their end customers. Yeah. So it's a it's a large uh, thing. So we have to. Uh, there is no magic uh, formula for this. That's where we need a lot of experience and insight into each other's uh, world for us to see how we can do differently. But we do have certain measures that we measure with each other. Okay. And I like very much the win-win-win approach. Uh, that's what I always uh, tell to people. That that's one of the cornerstones of a successful alliance, indeed. 
Um, one of the other elements that come to mind at the moment as we speak, uh, last week I was facilitating a workshop and two specific topics came to mind uh, up uh, quite often. And one is the topic of communication and the other one is the topic of culture. Now, when you tell me that you work globally, uh, you will have challenges with uh, communication and culture and probably they will uh, influence each other. Uh, people on the other side of the globe uh, will live in different time zones. Um, so you cannot always talk to them directly, even not with Skype as we do now. Um, you will have moments that they will asleep or you will be asleep. Uh, what do you do to manage proper communication with your partners is one side of the question. But then the other element is people on other parts of the world will have uh, different cultures um, and other companies will have different cultures. So what you say to them might be understood in a different way. Uh, so two connected questions there. How, how do you deal with that on a, working on a global level with partners? So it's a very good uh, culture and then the communication. Both are interrelated actually. Uh, since our job is global in nature, our customers are global, my internal customers are global, my partner uh, regions are uh, global. So it's, a, it's an added challenge. So email by far becomes a major means of communication between us. And then we do also conference calls where there'll be a larger team for both the companies. Mm -hmm. But more importantly than the email and the team calls, uh, what I have understood uh, is it's very important that we establish a one-to-one -one rapport at different levels in a, the partner and our organization. And it's also important that we understand each other's perspectives and each how each other, how each of us are measured within our organizations yeah. so that we can align. So I can, uh, when I, so all of this is definitely uh, leverage. What I do is, uh, whenever possible, whenever I visit any region, I make it a point to meet as many of my partners, executives, one to one. And that has uh, helped a lot because once I meet them, they and me understand how we work with each other, how we interact. Uh, the rest of uh, subsequent communication, even if there are some gaps in our communication, whether male or oral, it becomes very, very clear because we understand each other well. So having face-to-face uh, -face communication is important. And next, having one-to-one -one calls is also very important. Like the one that I am having with you, it's very important because so we could uh, discuss much beyond the stated objectives of the meeting. We not only establish the official connect but we also engage personally as people to people yeah. so that helps a lot in breaking a lot of barriers in communication so it's a, basically also a multi-level approach there and a yeah. multi uh, multi-tool approach where you indeed as you mentioned i recognize it immediately once you have looked each other in the eye and have met face to face communication will be different because you you know each other and you know what's driving each other yeah, and uh, a lot of things we learn uh, when we have informal uh, setup, like we go for dinner, for lunch together, uh, we have informal discussions, we understand about each other's culture, customs, the country, the games. So we understand a lot more beyond business. So that increases the depth of relationship between us. So we, we before, uh, two companies agree to work together or align to work together, it's very important the two representatives of the two companies are also aligned. So it's very important. Uh, so it's not just the company to company, it's the people who interact that matter because we have a big responsibility because I have to represent my company. I And I have to be very cognizant of uh, what I speak uh, how I speak and you know how I engage with my partners, how I bring them the comfort level. There are certain things I may be uncomfortable as a person, but mm -hmm. I have to make sure uh, that uh, 
you know, I have to look at the overall objectives and then uh, take it much beyond. Yeah. I can imagine that when you do, when you have a partnership with a similar sized company, that there will always be a dedicated counterpart. How do you deal with when you, when you have partnership with a smaller niche player? Uh, do they have, do they assign a dedicated counterpart or is for them alliance management and the management with your organization one of the many things they do? Um, you brought a good uh, question. So there are two situations that we face. Okay? Uh, companies who are invested in growing, though they would have had a large uh, sales and alliance ecosystem where they can actually pick and choose a few partners and they give dedicated attention for a year or two and they see how things went and then they realign every every other year. Uh, but what we have seen predominantly is the driving factor between the two companies is uh, when they have a dedicated uh, manager is how much revenue each other are influencing. Mm -hmm. It's the dollar that drives everything, whether it's a big or small. And uh, how big or how small is depending on how wa what their company's uh, targets are uh, in their relative terms. So as long as the two companies believe they are very strategic to each other and uh, it can drive a lot of revenues for their company, they do have one-on-one, -on -one, uh, irrespective of big or small. This is what I've observed. Uh, and uh, as the revenue system grows, and uh, one is revenues, second is the level of integration. How deep a partner is uh, engaged. Whether, uh, let's say I'm a system integrator uh, with a technology partner. Am I engaged not only with their sales force? Am I also engaged with their technology teams? Am I engaged with their engineering teams? Am I en engaged with their partners? So that we do some kind of a consortium approach wherein we come out with some very unique relationships that um, together we can do more. Mm -hmm. So when we come out with such things, then there is a lot more uh, attention of one on one. Else it would be like one to many. And today every company is lean, going lean. And uh, the first uh, uh, and the alliances, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, it's a very intangible role. Because uh, salesperson, I've been in sales a lot and I, uh, for many, many years before I moved to alliances. In sales, I am in front of the customer. I can influence the sale. But here, I'm not selling to the customer. I'm selling to somebody who sells to somebody who sells to customer. And there's a lot of internal influencing that I need to do in addition to me reaching to the customer. So this is a very different role and uh, it happens that uh, one on, you, we may, uh, you need a lot of horsepower, a lot of maturity in handling these relationships so that you, whether you are, uh, whether there's just one person uh, in supporting a company, uh, you know, or one person supporting many partners, uh, one needs to have that maturity when they're in, uh, in, involved in integration. Yeah. So I, one moment I uh, had to smile when you talked about internal influence. Uh, um, so we, we hear some figures that alliance managers spend the majority of their time keeping their internal organization in line with what needs to be done with the partner, uh, rather than they spend the majority of their time with their partner. How is that for you? Uh, there are certain partners which are extremely, there's a lot of demand. So in that case, I don't need to focus a lot on internal. There's a lot of buy-in. But there are certain new technologies, there are competing technologies, or the people may have worked on a technology they are, they are comfortable with. There I need to do a lot of selling. So if you look at a maturity curve of a relationship or a technology, if it's like a, if it's reached in a peak, if there's a lot of, uh, if the market trend is actually getting a lot in that particular technology, then the uh, selling would be relatively easy. But when, our, when, we, when I'm trying to get some, may, I do see as an alliance person, I see things much earlier than what my organization yeah. can see. because. I am interacting with 
many analysts, many partners in many informal ways. So we get to know what's happening. We go to several conferences where we meet a lot of executives. So we know what's happening. And uh, my goal is to find, pick those niche partnerships which can give us a difference, make the difference. So then I would need to do a lot of selling internally. And that becomes many times much more important than uh, selling to the customer. But I can see that you're, you're passionate, passionate about it. Uh, and especially when you have new technology discovered that you need to sell internally, you are, you're going for it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, we need some fun in this role. Uh, many times uh, the alliances can be looked upon as those people who actually network people, connect people. But it, to me, it's uh, much more than that. So I need to see how to connect two companies so that both of the companies can meet their stated objectives. So that's the most important fact. So I would need to make definitely, uh, I, need, I need to be cognizant of uh, those technologies which will make the difference for us and which will make the difference for them. Yeah. Just for example, I just signed up a relationship with a niche testing software partner. And personally, I'm very passionate about automation. So when I looked at their site, I was really very keen uh, uh, to understand. So I, I proactively connected with their uh, global head of sales and alliances. And then I facilitated the uh, meeting with uh, their CEO with one of my executives. And I had to do selling internally before I get them together. Yeah. So I had to position how it would be beneficial beneficial to each of them so i need to be as a as a person i need to prep both sides of the coin uh, if, before i get them to meet with each other so that they both know that i am there for i am their common denominator so when i get the i got them connected and i could definitely see that uh, they were very much well conditioned before they met and they were very prepared and the relationship, uh, all the basic elements of a relationship was very quickly established. And within a span of one and a half month of our relationship, we have a press release. We have about 10 leads together in the market. And there's already a competency capability development team established. The center of excellence is established. So in that way, I'm seeing uh, in an ideal way of doing alliance. This was one of the examples. It's just quickly gone to a pace uh, to a stage which was often established partner very fast yeah. so from that perspective looking at, at lessons you learned over the time that you are in alliances is there a specific lesson that you can share that, that you learned you the most on working in alliances okay uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, learnings that i've had uh, in alliances uh, some of them uh, Maybe very simple actually, uh, but yet uh, we don't follow. One is we need to have a lot of patience, uh, that, and uh, we need to have a lot of maturity because many times what they say may not be what they actually mean. Uh, so we need to be very much uh, uh, patient in what uh, we hear or say about them. Then we need to do a lot of homework. Be before we actually uh, attempt certain strategic things. Uh, that homework should come from within us mm -hmm. and it will be based on all our understanding, collective understanding that we have uh, gathered from all uh, sources. And then we need to position the information accordingly to the audience. So, and, uh, so that's very important. And we also need to be uh, very sure what is it that each of our partners in a relationship uh, term that the relationship is a success. So I need to be aware what makes them successful. And I need to uh, make sure that I have my parameters aligned to them. And where we are not aligned, we can be very open and on the areas where we cooperate, where areas where we compete, uh, so we need to have that very clear uh, crystal and rules of engagement. Yeah. 
so when we have these things in uh, aspects it will be very very easy okay and when are you in your role successful uh, can you repeat the question yes in your role when are you successful so okay um, I, I would say it's a continuous journey uh, yeah. because I can never say that I'm 100% successful all the time. It's a continuous journey and there's always room for growth, always room for improvement. And it's a continuous learning that I would say. But if you, uh, but to be, uh, if I have to answer when am I successful, uh, I would say we are, I'm successful when we are able to be aligned with our mutual objectives and both companies have concrete evidence of having influenced each other's business. Uh, business, visibility in the market and having a strong pipeline. Yeah. So you said that it is, it is a continuous learning. Um, I hear that more often with alliance managers and um, we also see that every alliance is different because we always work with a different partner in every alliance, every partner is different, so the, the, the components are different which makes the alliance different. Um, is, it, is it a typical trait for alliance managers, people in alliances, that they want to learn continuously, that they are looking for every time for that new project with new elements where, get, where they can learn something new, you think? Uh, no, it's not necessary that we need a new technology, new area to learn. There is learning in every uh, move that we make uh, in the in the in the market space with an established partner or a new partner. So, because alliances is all about interaction with people, it's it's lot more people. There is process, there are there is tools, there is technology, but it starts with people. And then it starts with uh, your awareness of what is going on in the industry and what is the recent uh, trend. So one has to be very much aware of what is selling, yes. where the industry is going. So that I am, uh, I am there, I, I am in uh, what I call, I am current in what I am doing. So, so that aspect of continuous learning is definitely needed to be there. But it does not mean that we need to always spring to a new technology. Okay. Now, you already given a, a lot of recommendations and tips uh, in, in this conversation. But when you look at um, uh, people or companies who are entering for the first time into an alliance, what would be your, your most important recommendation for them? Uh, Okay, the recommendation that I would give uh, to people who are getting to new partnerships are the following. One, they need to know what do they want to achieve by an alliance. They need to be very absolutely clear. What do they want to give? What do they want to take? It's a, it's a give and take relationship. Mm -hmm. It's not uh, uh, so a relation. So it's a mutual. So they need to be absolutely clear and what they want to achieve and they all and also successful relationships are wherein uh, there is a win-win to both of the companies if it is look i am becoming a partner to you because i need access to your partners that does not sustain yeah. so it, it so that so that's the so the alignment the measures uh, is very very important uh, when when you do the new uh, new partnerships and also uh, another important thing is top down alignment uh -huh. many times we align at a certain middle level or at an execution level or at a practice level um, and it takes some time to take it across the organization vertically and horizontally that happens by virtue of the relationship it takes longer time but it makes very it makes it very easy when the two executives at the top are aligned, and then it gets percolated down. And there's a lot of organizational barriers that are actually removed. Excellent. Um, is there a, a book about business or about collaboration that you would like to recommend? 
Uh, I did the radio book on alliances. I really like the book. Thank you. Uh, I, I read that. And he, there are a few more books that I have seen. Uh, the one written uh, by Cisco Alliance Manager. So I, I can just get the book. Let me see. The Strategic Alliances uh, by Steve Steinhilber. So that's a nice book, and uh, I, I fully agree with you. It, it, it's here somewhere. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, um, and there are a lot of uh, good articles on strategic uh, alliance relationships uh, that I have gone through. Strategic alliances by an entrepreneurial approach to globalization by Michael Yoshim, Yoshino. That was also good. So. It says how we, as an alliance uh, manager, be very entrepreneurial in our approach. So yes. that will make us always young, fresh, uh, adapt for new ideas, eager to make change, eager to make the first move, be proactive. Sounds good. So the, the recipe for a long, young life is to be become an alliance manager. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well. Um, thank you very much for this conversation. Is there anything you would like to share with our audience that we, we haven't discussed yet? Uh, all I would uh, like to tell my colleagues or peers in the industry is uh, partnerships are very important in today's business. You cannot live without. And gone are the days where businesses were that started in a garage and they just uh, grow on their own. Today, the power of partnerships, leveraging uh, mutual, uh, you know, the, the, tech, the companies today are so broadly, the, the technology is so broad. Uh, you just take, uh, for, a, for an example, Internet of Things. It has devices, it has technologies, it has software, it has different use case scenarios. So anything that you need to transact, you need to have uh, a good relationship, uh, uh, ecosystem of partners. So there's so the so the future is definitely for all companies who are best in class in their uh, uh, industry is to leverage partnerships, not just by the spirit of that we have a partner department or an alliance department, but really make use of that, bring them as part of your core business strategy and definitely that would uh, take their company long way. Well, I think that's an excellent advice for our audience and I, I, I fully agree with you. Thank you very much. Where can people find more about you or connect with you? <laughs> uh, in LinkedIn, I have, uh, can look at my name, Ramanath Surya Prakash. I will link to that in the show notes to make Thank it easy. You. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you very much, Ram. Have a good day. So far for the conversation with Ramanath Surya Prakash. You can find the links to the items we discussed in the show notes of this episode at petersimounts.com. Bye for now. Until next time.